When you pass through the waters, the word waters there indicates whatever challenges you're facing. So for some of you, when I pass through, when, you, when I pass through, watch me, the relationship challenges, the economic challenges, the health challenges, when I pass through my mindset challenges, what does God say? I will be what? Come on, I will be what? And through the rivers, they shall not what? Come on, it's on the screens. Will not what? When you walk through the what? Fire. It will not what? Burn. Burn. Nor shall the flame what? I will be with you through the fire and through the flood. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they come for me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Are going to follow me all the days of my life. So as you start walking, come on, surely goodness and mercy are right behind you. And as you keep on walking, they keep on walking. And when you feel like quitting, you start backing up. But surely goodness and mercy, they start pushing you. They start prodding you. No. I have one Savior. And your Savior is your source. I know that God has more than enough for everybody. I know that God has more than enough love and forgiveness and grace for everybody. I know that God has more than enough resources for everybody. So if God blesses Ronnie Crawford, and I say, Man, God, why are you blessing him? I've identified the root problem in myself. Because if I think he's blessing him, subconsciously I don't think there's enough for it to come to me also. See, that's why I've learned. If God wants to bless Ronnie, bless him big, God. If God wants to bless Mark Chick, bless him big. If God wants to bless uh, Chris, bless him big. If God wants to bless uh, uh, Frank, bless him big. Why is that? Because our God never loses resources. There's more than enough abundance to go around. Come on, are you hearing what I'm saying? You've got to shift your thinking. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. If you're continually looking behind, you cannot see where you are going. How many of you always like, at times, beat yourself up for bad decisions in the past? How many of you ever said this, man, I should have? Man, if I could have? And what's the next one? Should have, could have? Should have, could have? Ooh, you belong to the same club I do, don't you? Whatever happened in 2008 ended at 12 midnight. It ended. It's done. Now, some of us need to get some healing. Some of us need to get some closure. But you cannot try and reverse anything that has happened. You need to say, you know what? If I made a mistake with Mark Schick, I need to say, you know what, Mark? I blew it in 2008 with you. I shouldn't have said that. Hey, please forgive me. And I know Mark. Mark's a man of God. He's going to say, absolutely, Pastor. It's not a big deal because everybody wants to be right with everybody else. I don't think there's anybody that just, man, I just want to be bitter and angry the whole time in 2009 for what happened in 2008. But why do we hold on to the past when we can't change it? Mean to you because your skin color is dark. People are mean to you if you have too much money. People are mean to you if you don't have enough money. People are mean to you. People will always be mean. That's a deep revelation. You know that even Christians are mean sometimes? Don't, don't shout me out. You know, I got it. Can I get real personal with you? With my own life. By the way, the only reason why I talk about myself is because I know myself. Please tell me all your junk and garbage via email and I'll start using your illustrations. <laughs> Gladly. Gladly. Mark told me, man, you just cut somebody out. This is via email and this is... So, so I'm not into myself. People, oh, he's in himself. The church, you know, it's, it, it, it's stupidity. I just know my life, okay? I was struggling as I had some time off and you know you do thinking as a pastor and, you know uh, churches grow and when they grow some people leave and a lot of people get added and I'm so glad for that but I don't know what it is about pastors that when anybody ever leaves their church they just can't handle it it just drives you crazy even the ones you prayed would leave <laughs> Because they're gossips, you know, come on, they're backbiters, they're divisive, and you and you pray that they would leave and they end up leaving, and it's like you you you're like dysfunctional. It's like, God, why did they leave? Why did they go to that church? Our church is better than that church. This is what I've stopped God. The Lord spoke to me. 
He said, if you take credit for people leaving, then you're going to take credit for people joining. It's not about you, Perez. And then he took me to scripture, Matthew chapter 16. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And you know what? I know what some of you think, Pastor, when God spoke to you, weren't you so happy? No. I was still mad. But God, I mean, I cried with them. I walked through cancer with them. God, I mean, I anointed them with oil and the staff and everybody else. And they ended up leaving. And they saying this and they saying that.